with me there's Dr. Max Ganado from Ganado Advocates, who are heavily involved in the legislation, um, the formatting, what would you call the it? The legislation related. Okay, the legislation related to blockchain. So let's ask the, the big question, what is this blockchain all about? What is happening here is that there's been a development in technology. Now I'll explain to you what that is which is going to change a lot of the way we do things and it's going to provide a lot of opportunities. And the best example I can give you, which will make you understand, is the Internet. When the Internet hit the world, when the Internet hit the world, we had a, a sudden reaction because we created a different way of communicating, which now, 10 years later, is what it is. Now, what we're seeing now is a development on that team. Instead of a communication device, now we have a device which can store documents, which can uh, have transactions between people, including the payment of money. And that can all be done through the internet as easily as we communicate. So the expectation now is that the way we do things is going to change as seriously as the way communication changed from 10 years ago till today. How will it affect though on, uh, on an individual? Yes. What are the improvements in, in a, someone's life? Well, what's happening with blockchain, because it is a ledger which is shared among everybody who's using it, you now have what is called peer-to-peer -peer relationship. So I can deal with you directly. And it is cutting away all intermediaries, including potentially lawyers. But any intermediaries like banks or, in, or investment advisors or property brokers, anybody in between two people who traditionally we use to transact or to communicate or whatever is being eliminated. How is that uh, good? That's good because it eliminates cost. We don't have to pay commissions anymore. It increases speed. We, we can do things immediately. We don't have to wait for two or three days for money transfer to take place. And more importantly for the integrity of the system, and this is what is really what this is all about, is it is recorded in a way that cannot be tampered. So it's so, safe? So it's safe and the information can be relied upon and trusted. Nothing can be tampered, it can't be touched. Because the system is what is called distributed ledger technology, which means that this ledger, which has the transactions between me and you, is di distributed among thousands of people who are using the same system. So if you had to take the example, for instance, of Yahoo, or you know, one of the, the Gmail accounts, we're all using it. Imagine the whole system is on my computer, is on yours, and is on his, and is on hers. They can hack yours and they can destroy it, but mine keeps on going. So this is a technology which, because it is distributed, cannot be changed without the consent of everybody involved in it, usually at around 50%, you know, but it's a consensus mechanism which changes it. Now, why do we need to have all this activity here? Because Malta has seen this as a, a life-changing opportunity for our societies. And we're also seeing that it's coming from a very risky place because there's been, you know, money laundering, there's been criminality, you know, in terms of these Bitcoin. But that is what started it off and because it was anonymous, it, you know, led to certain consequences. Regulation has to come in, not to allow it to be abused. It's too important a technology to allow it to be pushed into a corner and not allowed to develop in a community. Now, because it's happening across the world, it's going to hit Malta as well. So, you know, the government decided we come in and regulate. Now, you can regulate in a harsh way or you can regulate in a supportive way. And the, stra the strategy we've adopted is where it touches investments and money, then we're going to regulate in a hard way because there are laws which already exist about the subject. So MFSA is going to come in with what we call a mandatory law, which is going to require licenses for anybody who is dealing with those types of assets. On the other hand, in order to make sure we don't interrupt the innovative uh, creativity that is happening around the place, when it comes to the technology, we do not regulate in a harsh way, but we invite people to approach the regulator and voluntarily, voluntarily subject themselves to regulation. And that means that what you're doing is you're setting a standard for this type of technology which you are going to encourage people to move to. So what our regulation law says now, and that's the Malta Digital Innovation Authority says, submit to us the technology. Will you appoint a technical person who is a systems auditor and he will test it. 
and check that it does what it does so that a user, a member of the public, doesn't suddenly put their assets on it and they disappear. And every single user can see every single transaction taking place on it. Now, at the moment, and it will remain like that because of certain privacy issues, there are cryptographic keys and there are security measures to ensure that people don't steal each other's money and each other's assets. And even that technology has to be checked because if you assume that your assets are protected, you want to be sure that it's checked. If you do that, you get a certification. Now, the logic that's applying here is that if you encourage people to move to higher standards and Malta gives them a certification, they've got more credibility in the market and it will then work. Excellent. And Ganado has been involved? Well, we, we saw the potential of this because we're working a lot in the financial services industry, which is all intermediated. So all our clients are intermediaries and we could see immediately the risk and the context, you know, but as we looked more and more at it, we started seeing the potential good that can come out of it. So then we set up a team across practically all the departments of the firm because this is going to hit everyone. It's going to hit education, health, volunteer organizations, government, even government, you know, the way government acts. Uh, it's going to hit banks, it's going to hit investment firms, you know, it's going to hit shipping and aviation, everything we do. So, you know, we thought we'd uh, choose a lawyer from each group and we started studying the issue and then eventually we proposed with some other people in the industry that government actually intervenes and starts regulating and encouraging the industry to move to a certain direction. Now, what was the sensitivity of that? No other country was doing it in the same way. So we came out with a strategy which was fairly unique. And when we came out with it, we came out as one of the first countries. I mean, there are others. There's Gibraltar, there's Estonia, uh, now there's uh, France, and then there's, uh, you know, many, many countries all studying it. Because we're small, and because people in the industry could come together and we could all work together, we actually were able to produce something fairly fast. And uh, as soon as we did that, everybody saw the logic and the creativity and the innovation in our approach and subscribed to it. So when the government organized this event and they launched it uh, across the world with the, with the col collaboration of industry, because you know, people were all marketing it, you know, it actually struck a chord, which you can see and feel with literally the thousands of people all communicating and working around it, which is very, very exciting. Last question, 10 years time, let's say five years time, what are we looking at? Yeah, well, actually, uh, the, the way technology is working, the prediction is that in five years time, we'll be in the same place that the internet took 10 years to develop. So the expectation is that in five years time, we're going to have this technology, which is going to become embedded in our phones. And we're going to be using it without even knowing. Yet, the integrity of the systems are going to be much, much of a much higher level because it involves assets. Communications never involved assets. It was always a letter or a note. This is going to involve property. It's going to involve money. It's going to involve your education certification, your health records. And it's going to be covered by strong rules in terms of standards of mandatory law, you know, of privacy and of accountability and of tax and of AML, which is the money laundering rules. So we expect that, you know, there's going to be a shift into a much higher level of flexibility in transactions, ease, cost, speed. And everything is going to become much more sophisticated and transparent. So we're going to have a shift from information which is exploited by the likes of Facebook where they're using your information because they're reading what you're doing to you having your information a very secure platform and when you go to do something with a bank you provide that information as a block which has also been verified by third parties as being authentic so you know it's a, it's, it's a well changing event and people haven't yet quite understood what's happening but slowly they are going to start realizing because the benefits will start emerging. We're still early stage. You don't need to understand the technology to understand what is going to happen. But people, just like they saw the benefits of the internet, will start seeing the benefits of this technology coming out slowly. Very good. Thank you very much.